Alright, so today we're going to uh, continue with the uh, Dawn Pentecost book, uh, put them down, take them out, uh, knife fighting from inside Folsom uh, Prison. And we're going to look at chapter 4, uh, knife defense. And of course what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, chapter 3, what we learned with the attack, and we're going to put this with the defense. And when we do the attack, at the end of attack number 3, uh, excuse me, at the end of uh, chapter 3, he you know gives you like step by step of how to attack. We're going to follow that uh, guideline of his with the big thing being that you just keep stabbing until you've taken this guy out, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, I mean, it was literally what we were doing before, except we didn't just keep stabbing forever until the guy was down. But we're, we're gonna take that attack and we're gonna use Dawn's uh, defensive uh, concepts to, uh, to use against that. So again, let me just read some of these. Uh, he says, uh, the following list outlines the basic principles of defense against a knife attack. Some principles are specific and some are generic. So first off, prevention. Prevention is a vague concept. Prevention, awareness, and mental attitude are closely related. Prevention involves action on your part before the fact, before the act, act, act attack actually occurs. The information in this book should be used as a foundation for such preventive action. Uh, number two, mental attitude. This is the single most important factor in combat survival. Proper mental attitude in your training and in, re in a real situation cannot be overemphasized. Uh, awareness, awareness. Always be alert and aware of your surroundings. It is extremely important to take the element of surprise away from your opponent. And we've been talking a lot about that as we've been going on. Again, uh, uh, prevention, you know, that's everything. Uh, the mental attitude, you know, having to stay in the fight, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. Uh, again, I'm not so much with Dawn where this uh, <coughs> sure will and determination is going to be more the victor over uh, sound concepts and good technique. Uh, I'm very, uh, I'm a very big believer in that you can train yourself to a level where your level will be able to uh, undermine anybody else's level of will and determination. Again, because of the training, you know, you'll have a built-in level of will and determination. I mean, you're trying to, uh, uh, you're trying to complete your mission of your concepts to stop this attack. And no matter how badly this guy wants to kill you, you know, your skill should be able to overwhelm that. I mean, let's just say, uh, I mean, there's a little five-year-old who really, really is pissed off and really, really wants to kill you. What are the odds of him killing you? Well, you have a clue about how to move and how to defend. And no matter how bad that kid wants to kill you, he's just not gonna be able to overcome your skill level. Well, now let's ramp it up to a, uh, a crazed 23-year-old who wants to kill you. But now instead of just having the coordination advantage over a five-year-old, you now have a course of training in knife fighting as your increased level of skill to combat this determination. So, I mean, to me, it's pretty simple to see how that could work. But in Don's world, it just doesn't work like that. It's just determination is the in factor, and I just don't buy it. So anyways, uh, offense. A good offense is your primary defense. Often a strong offense is the only defense that is needed. Fighting is so extremely quick that offense and defense are, at most times, simultaneous. But you must wait for the proper opening before going on the offensive against an armed opponent. And again, uh, when we start looking in a, a later lesson, we're going to show you that you don't have to wait for this guy. You know, you should be on the offensive as soon as the knife appears. And again, you know, we're building the foundations with all these drills so that we can get to that. You just can't jump to that stuff. I mean, sure, you can make it work as long as the guy who's knife fighting is fighting in a similar way or in a way that you're familiar with. But once you go to a different style, what are you going to do? You know, it's going to be completely different. And it's going to be much harder for you to really get the hang of it if you haven't built a foundation before we get to there. So again, we're getting there. Uh, number five, he says, expect to be hit. Even the best defensive fighters get hit. You must uh, expect to receive some damage in any fight. Again, this goes back to uh, you're probably going to be cut, you know, the rules of knife fighting. Uh, to think otherwise will destroy your concentration and actual attack. Remember this for your training objectives. So again, if you're... If you're training and you never, ever, ever get hit, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, keep your eyes open. Never take your eyes off an opponent or a potential opponent, especially when you're hit, which is the most difficult time to do so. 
Always expect an attack if somebody's within striking range. Uh, protect your back at all times. And again, that's you know that's why those intervals are so important. You know those intervals. Uh, it's very important. That's why being aware, you know, looking at this guy. And again, we're going to look at this in the next chapter a little more. Uh, I mean, the next lesson we're going to uh, build upon what we're seeing here in this text. Uh, protect your number seven. Protect your back at all times. Never turn your back on any opponent at any time. No hold, throw, or kick that requires you to present your rear to the opponent is practical. Again, what is he saying? No hold, no throw, no kick. This would include a knife attack, a punch, anything that requires you to present your rear to the pony is practical. He said none of them are practical, okay? So you gotta get all that stuff out of your arsenal. Now, may there be a time where Murphy shows up and all of a sudden your back is facing your enemy and you do need some of those weapons? Yes. So I don't agree with him 100% again. I mean, something could happen where you stumble, your back is turned, this guy's coming on you. Do you need some kind of a back kick or some kind of a back uh, fist type technique to help you keep this guy off you so you can get reoriented to him? Yes, you do. So again, it could happen. But again, don't bring this stuff into your attacks. I mean, I see, uh, <clears throat> again, that act combat one guy, he does a thing where he calls a, uh, a drop thrust or a, a drop slash or something like that where he comes up and he drops down at this guy, and when he does so, his feet are like right next to each other, and he's turned almost to the rear on this guy as he's doing this. I mean, to me, he has fully exposed his back. I mean, all this guy had to do to, to uh, counter, again, his little strike, because it's a strike of the guy's knife. All the guy would have to do is move his knife in any one of these ways, and the guy has just missed his strike. And now here he is squatting, almost facing away from the guy he just attacked. And what's this guy gonna do? He's gonna come forward and he's gonna fall on top of him. Never mind if he's actually skilled and he can stab or jump on his back and then take his stroke. I mean, just absurd. Uh, another one is, uh, I mean, I really like Michael Janich, but sometimes, you know, I think he needs to get out there in the real world and watch, you know, some the way people really fight. Uh, he does these mechanical cuts where he, uh, he comes in with a uh, stab and a comma cut into the inner thigh of the guy, but while he's doing so, he's kind of to the flank, but he's giving the guy his back again. If the guy just orients like this, he's gonna have Paul's back. Now what happens if he was able to get a piece on these on these knife attacks that Paul's throwing, and they aren't highly effective uh, finishes? Again, a lot of the stuff uh, that he shows requires a lot of skill, and unfortunately, uh, somebody may learn the movement without possessing the skill required to carry it off. And now, because he's following that training, he has now exposed his back on purpose as part of his technique. And if something didn't go right with all those stabs, now he's put himself in a very detrimental uh, position. So I mean, there's, there, there, it, it's a very good point that he makes. Protect your back at all times. But don't just give your back away. I mean, prepare for the fact that something may happen and your back may be facing the opponent and now you need some weapons but don't go into a technique where you're gonna give your back to the guy. It's absurd. Okay, and number eight, keep moving. Of course, this is one of the most important things, you know. Uh, probably the most important thing in any fight is your ability to move, especially in, with defensive uh, concepts in mind. You know, if you can just avoid this guy, and I've been in several knife fights where I just avoided the dude. I just kept moving away from him. Dude couldn't catch me because I had worked on my footwork. I was in decent physical condition. Uh, just couldn't catch me uh, unless you were uh, an, another highly trained athlete. So anyways, uh, this is a huge thing. A moving target is more difficult to hit and your opponents cannot get set offensively. Effective movement is not dancing around the opponent. Effective movement is not dancing around the opponent. opponent. Avoid exaggerating movements. Try to move the minimum effective distance. Uh, an overreaction or improper movement in your part can throw off your balance. A good balance is crucial when defending against a knife attack. There we go. So uh, I'm gonna have the knife here. We do like this. We're gonna be in a hard. I know you're going that way. So we'll start over here. Okay, so we're having the hard thing here. Now, once I go like this, your initial reaction has to be to block my hand. All right. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do some Folsom-style prison attacks. 
with some of the defense that Don has mentioned. Again, trying to uh, keep facing the guy with the knife, trying to use the hand on the knife side to fend off the knife, and try to use this other hand to get in a counter strike. Again, a counter strike we're gonna be looking for is for fingers on the top of the forehead. I mean, if you can get fingers on the top of the forehead, you could have got those fingers in his eye. And if you get those fingers hard and deep into his eye, this guy has problems. If you don't believe me, go watch any MMA fight, go watch a boxer get a thumb in the eye. Uh, again, these are trained, tough guys, and they are almost immediately out of the fight. So that's your big thing. That would be your chance to escape, or that would be your chance to come in with a big uh, knockout blow, whatever you happen to use. Uh, for me, that would be like a palm heel to the, uh, anywhere along the jaw or underneath the nose. Uh, it could also be a hammer fist striking down on the forehead, the nose, anything. These are gonna be good shots that will take this guy out of the fight. And again, uh, you know, Don talks about uh, not kicking, but definitely a big tie kick to uh, the thigh uh, is gonna help put this guy down. Uh, if you can get behind him also, and uh, you know, drop the knee down, put him on the ground. You get this guy in his stomach and all of a sudden, that's a good place to be on the ground grappling. This guy's got a knife, but he's on his stomach. How's he really, I mean, this is a really only move he has. It's gonna be pretty easy for you at this point to trap that hand and then start just dropping knees on his, uh, on his knuckles to break the fist up. Uh, or again, if you can stand up quickly and uh, get a stomping on his hand. And again, not stomping straight down, stomping on one of the points where you run across it this way so you twist those digits up and just dislocate and break them all to shit. Uh, again, you know, we're not talking about being nice here. We're not talking about, oh, this is a dirty trick you can use. No, this is what you use. The most violent, the most aggressive, the most damaging technique you can possibly find. This guy has a knife in his hand. He's trying to kill you. There's Buddy now. Oh. So again, to make it as realistic as possible in a scenario where we both know what's going on, what's gonna happen is with that first jab, the defender has to bring both hands up and try to block that first jab. Okay, from there, now I'm gonna come in with a knife attack and from there he can start his knife attack. But he can't, uh, he can't step back, he can't do anything until he at least touches my hand. Just to try to keep a real response. So that was our first little run through. As you can see, first off, I got in quite a few stats. I mean, at first I was just boom, boom, boom, and he's just blocking them, blocking them, blocking them. And then all of a sudden I'm like, how am I doing? Let me hit some other angles. So I start hitting some other angles. I get some shots on his neck, some shots on his stomach. The thing you might not have noticed though, was how many times he was poking me in the head. It seemed like the whole time I'm getting poked in the head. So how realistically, uh, Am I going to be able to stay in that fight without, you know, curling up? I mean, if I can't see, it's going to be hard for me to follow this attack. So, just one example. All right. What do you got a knife for, man? You need to change that knife. Yeah. Yeah. You Again, you can see. You can see how Scotty, you know, he starts taking them shots in the head, and where's all his attention diverted to? I'm freaking banging him on the side of the head like this. You know, I mean, could I have come down and cracked down hard and gotten him? Yeah. Uh, did he touch me? I think one time with the knife. Yeah, he touched me one time with the knife. Again, we aren't using the small blade. We're using the big blade to make sure that you can defend a big boy. Okay. So again, you can see that, uh, I don't know how effective the attack, I really didn't think it was that effective. Uh, and I'm using Don Pentecost's method. I'm not even using my own method of defense. I'm using Don Pentecost. But for me, you know, I've, I've got a little experience. Uh, so I was able to fend that off pretty good. We'll do a couple more. I'm my bitch. You're my bitch. Tonight you're going to be my bitch. You're my bitch. Is 
So I don't know how early we went out of frame there. But uh, that time I grabbed his arm and tried to hook him a little more. Once you get his arm grabbed, believe me, you don't have to fight that defense so much anymore. So again, even when you're on that uh, defense, you have to uh, avoid letting this guy grab your arm. So yeah, we're just standing there and fighting. I took a lot of shots to the rib that time. He even came up and got me once on the side of the skull. But of course, this hand was already in his face. I mean, yeah, it was in his face earlier. It was right there. Yeah. Told you never, ever, ever look at my girlfriend. Did I try to stab you last week? Now here I am again this week. You're trying to freaking look at my girlfriend again. My thighs are steel. Got disarmed. <laughs> Try again. Scotty is using uh, mobility, which is very good. No problems with that. Unfortunately, it's not helping our drill because we only have a small area, so I'm gonna uh, hamper his ability to go back by telling me he can't go back. Okay. You can only go back when you receive actual body pressure. Okay. Okay, now don't be a fucking pushy ass fucking cunt or something like that. Try to be a fucking man. Try to be a man about it. Okay. Yeah. So now you see how effective that leg grab is. Just kills the mobility. And I think that's why he ran away from me before. He probably saw me coming for the leg. Again, training, yo. Know, now you've seen what it looks like when a guy is shooting for your leg with a knife. You know, is, is that going to be one of those ones where you're really going to get on your horse right away? Yeah, that would be a time to get on your horse and ride away. It certainly worked better for Scotty when he could run away when I went for his leg than when he had to stand there and I did get his leg. Worked out a whole lot different, so you see that mobility difference. Now I just want to say one thing. Do these knife attacks look more realistic than uh, most of your videos on YouTube where a guy comes out with one stab and stands there? için konak meydanında buluşuyor. İki çocuğuyla birlikte yaşayan Murat Erdem eşine barışma teklif ediyor. Ancak Çilem Erdem yeniden evine dönmek istemiyor. Police are about to move in. When suddenly The suspect savagely slashes one officer after another. Panicky cops finally open fire. But it doesn't stop Echeverria's homicidal rampage. The victim continues to fight back. Suddenly, he attacks the security guard with a 10-inch knife.
runs the blade through the guard. The man goes down. He manages to knock the knife away. 